guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeze and I'm a YouTuber based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. If you're new to this channel, you're welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. So in today's video, we're going to be cooking and chatting, okay? And the reason why I decided to do this video is because I did one of these videos last year and you guys loved it so much. So I was like, oh, you guys are interested in what I have to say while I cook. Thank you. Because I'm really not a cooking type, like I really don't love cooking. I cook because I have to and I really, I cook well actually, like I cook well, but if I don't have to, I won't do it, okay? So, to get me through today's cooking, I'm bringing you guys along and yeah. So, let me start with my children's soup. I'm already, I'm quickly, I'm boiling egg now for myself. Let me start with their soups. And my has already helped me prep what I need. Um, their okra was grated. Usually grate okra for their soup. Um, fish, I buy. I usually buy smoked fish. You guys know, what do they call smoked fish now? Smoked, I think it's called smoked mackerel. Yeah, I think it's mackerel, I don't know. Is it mackerel? What is Titus fish called? Anyway, they call it scumbia in, in Potakot. In Lagos, they call it Titus fish. Um, the smoked one is what I buy. So I just buy it. The bone is remove the flesh and use it to cook their okra soup is so so delicious. So um that's already done and then onions for me to onions for me to use and cook their soup. Their soup is very very simple. Okay, I need crayfish, I need crayfish and my ghee. So I'm using my ghee bottom pot. I normally use nor I have nor here but let me try bottom pot for this. Is it bottom pot? My give Niger for what I'm going to use. And I'm also going to use crayfish for their soup. Um, red oil, okra, fish, and onions. That's basically their soup. And they love it. You know, that's one thing that I know that in this house they eat. Almost every night they eat swallow. My children eat swallow. And the reason why I give them swallow at night is that I don't want anybody to disturb me in the middle of the night that they're hungry. So I give them swallow at night so they will sleep straight. Because they are still stop me for food later on. Sometimes. Um, Cora says, oh, I want cereal that because she doesn't eat much um, Eva, but Eva eats Eva very well and you know, I love it. So anyway, let me start with their soup Okay, so this is the pot I'm going to be using now <clears throat> So first of all, I kind of fried the um, I will just eyeball the oil. The oil is kind of much, but I don't mind using a lot of oil for children because I heard that um, olive oil and bread oil is very good for children. So I don't mind putting much for them so that you know they get all the benefits. Onions, this is quantity of onions I'll be using for their soup. Um, onions, lots of onions taste really good in um, okra soup. So that's why I'm adding this quantity. Let me bring you guys closer. So I just fried the bit in oil. Not too much. Not I don't um I'm not crystallizing the onions. Is it crystallizing the colour? Yeah, whatever the English is. I'm not crystallizing the onions, I'm just frying it so that yeah, it's not so raw. I think that's okay. So this is the fish, it's already deboned. I'm not using a lot, I'm just using like half of this. Okay, more than half actually. This is the grated okra. I'm just going to add it. Much their soup, oh. their soup is ready, like, 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 as in that 10 minutes. It's not about to 10 minutes. I used to cooking that soup, like, it's ready, so and they really enjoy it, anyway. So, let's just jump right into the main topic of today's video, and that is my most embarrassing situation that I've ever been in in this life. Oh my god, oh no, no. <laughs> there are experiences that when I remember, they are so cringy to me. They are so like, I'm just like, you know what. God, take these memories away from me because these memories are torture. They are serious torture. But anyway, it's not that serious, okay? Uh, I'm just going to tell you the ones that are very 
hilarious let me put it that way my hilarious uh, embarrassing situations okay so my first most embarrassing situation that i want to talk about is when i was working in the bank okay i'm sure if my friends watch this video they're going to be like don't tell that story <laughs> i have to tell the story you people are the ones that that, that put me in such situation so stay there and listen anyway so there was this day that okay if, if you guys don't know i worked in the bank for some years before i resigned and became a stay-at-home mom i resigned before i i got pregnant with cora in fact the month i resigned was the month i took in for cora so after my four years the month i resigned from the bank was the month i took in for cora anyway so one of those days now you guys you know bank marketing in banking is pretty much glorified begging that's that's just the truth anybody that's telling you otherwise is, 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 is deceiving you it is glorified begging there's really nothing much that your bank is doing that another bank is not doing and in my own case i was in a bank where they didn't really have many things you know to compete with other banks they didn't really have enough to compete with other banks so marketing was just a matter of please bring money to my banks so and help me help my career help my job that kind of thing okay and then sometimes we'll have Increase in interest rates and other and other just to get customers into the bank anyway So one of those days in fact, I hated my job But the only reason why I used to go to my job at some point was just because of my two best friends then You know that the only reason why I would dress up in the morning and be saying I'm going to the office It wasn't even about the money. It wasn't even about the job. It was just about oh I had two friends that would help me you know cope two friends that could relate They were like my best were my best friends actually so and we're still very close to you today even though we've all left that bank we are all doing different things but yes we are still very close because um, of how close we were then you know so i had this friend who i told her that i asked him to talk to your father so that he will open an account with us and you know put in money into the bank i said okay come and talk to your father so she told her father that i was coming so i went to his office hna you hna i had us individual it's not it's not any any hard person like serious hna so i went to his office i opened the account and all that and all that but he hadn't put money in the accounts you know initially so one time there was now a you know at the times in the bank when they need funds badly do not be like anyhow if you want to get it you people don't send anybody in the office everybody go out you know go and make sure you meet your target anyhow anyhow just go and get the money so that day i was like what am i going to do so me and these my two friends we decided that okay we'll go for each other's calls now calls is marketing call marketing meetings so I said we'll go for each other's call. So three of us will go for one person's call. Three of us will go for one person's call. So it was now my turn to go for my own call. So that was how I went to this man's office. So told him about the situation that he should open an account. He should uh, put funds in his account that were going to give him a good interest rate. This, that, this, that. This. So the guy listened to me, you know, very nice guy. But it's not, it's not like how do I put it his humility will make you think that oh he's just a normal person no i'm talking about one of the movers and shakers of potter hmm. i'm just saying all this one so I, i'll put i'll put what happens next into context so while we were there um he now said okay that he wants to do some things that he will get back to me immediately we were sitting in his office like seated in front of his desk um he said okay that he'll get back to me but he was doing some other things making phone calls and stuff like that so we were just waiting in his office for him to write the check so while we were there, we were not looking at our phones. That was the first mistake. I should have not looked at my phone that day. I should have just focused on the man. No. But you know, it was kind of awkward. He was doing his own thing. I was just sitting down there. So we started, you know, chatting on our group chats. And that day, for some reason, our group chat, our group chat was so lit. My friends were just so funny. They were just saying funny things, you know, back to back. You know when your group chat is very lit now and everybody's just, you know, giving giving to each other very hot. <laughs> So my friends said, we're all typing funny things to each other. Next thing, hmm, in this man's office, my friends started laughing. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> they started laughing. First of all, it started small, small, just like, what is going on? You guys, you guys know, maintain now, like maintain. The guys just feel free to in front of us, maintain. But they couldn't hold it. They said, you know, laughing, it was now becoming louder. Even me said, it was funny to me. In fact, their laugh was making me feel like laughing about I mean, I can't be laughing in front of my own customer now. So I was just like, God, you guys, get it together, get it together. My dear, that was how these children, these two annoying girls, just started laughing out, as in they busted out laughing in front of this man's office. The man turned out looking at us like, What's going on? They were laughing. You know, one had to excuse herself. The other one was trying to hold herself. She couldn't hold it. She had to excuse herself. 
Hey, you know they call each one na bend them more. I don't know, my mom used to say it a lot. Each one na bend them more. He yeah, from like that day, I wanted the ground to just open and carry me and never bring me back to that mass office because it was so embarrassing. And funny enough, he didn't even act like he was offended or you know he felt some type of way about what was happening. He just looked, he just looked like what's going on. Then he continued doing what he was doing, you know, until they now excused us. So as I was there, I was sweating. You know when you're sweating inside cold AC, you guys, I was sweating that day. I said, hey, oh, what? why is my life like this? Why did I come with these girls? And the girl was actually going to write me a check. Yeah, so he actually wrote the check. He transferred funds into the account. But you guys, since that day, to go and face him was a big trouble. Anytime I had any reason to go to his office, I would have to think twice. I was just dodging him because that situation was so embarrassing to me. Yeah, so... It was it was something else. like now anytime we remember it we laugh about it. It was so funny. You guys were hearing any noise in the background. It's Cora. Cora is here cooking. Anyway, so yeah, we laugh about it now, but it was so embarrassing. Like for days I couldn't just I couldn't remember it without without feeling like crying. Like why? Why? <laughs> anyway, so that's one. Um let me get to cooking my lunch because I'm very hungry right now. Okay, so you guys the hamburger parties I'm going to be using. Is it hamburger or beef burger? Well, whatever the burger parties I'm going to be using is the one made by Spa. Um, if you guys don't know, Spa that is the supermarket that is in Portacos Mall, they actually pack their own freshly made um, hamburger patties. So it's easy for me to just, I think this is four, it's very easy for me. The day I bought this, I went in the room and I was like, why don't I just buy the ground beef and make it myself? I was like, sister. You like cooking me, I don't like cooking, okay? I just cook because I have to. So what am I going to waste my time now? So now nice, I'm hungry now. I will now start uh, uh, mixing uh, mixing burger then start flattening that side. No, I can't I can't do that, okay? So yeah, that's why I bought it. It's pretty much it's pretty expensive, but it's not that bad. Like if you buy ground beef and make it yourself, it might be slightly cheaper, slightly. So the only good thing about making it because I used to make it myself too. The only difference is that you control what you put inside so it will taste the way you want it to taste but this one tastes pretty good on its own so i really don't care anyway i've talked too much let's do not become too long even though it is cook and chat let's not become uh, chat chat all, all through uh let me just quickly clear my kitchen counter and i will show you guys what i'm doing next so even though it's packed like this they actually used a um, film to cover it so i just put it here okay so guys i'm done with the beef uh what like all this pan roasted whatever anyway i'm done with the beef i need to remove it from the fire because this pan retains heat so i feel like the under is burning anyway um so for this burger i'm going to be using just mayonnaise um mayonnaise lettuce and eggs i like eggs in my burger the one i make at home shop i like eggs in it so mayonnaise lettuce and eggs anyway before i go in, before i make my tea let me tell you guys another embarrassing situation that i've been in but this one is not that bad now because it's now an inside joke between me and my husband it happened between me and my husband in fact there are two. Oh my god oh no i forgot <laughs> no what happened between me and my husband anyway the first one was okay let me start from the one that happened before the what i want to say now anyway so then when my husband came to see me in school i was feeling like a hot chick uh, <laughs> I was feeling hot with myself, so I was still wearing G string. I was still one of those people that used to wear G string. Anyway, so one day, me and him went out. I think we went to where did we go to? I think we went to the zoo, went to different places, you know. Then we we're going back to my room or something. I don't know because then I was staying in a hostel, but a private hostel outside school. So we we're going back to my room or something like that. Anyway, so. I just know that you know sometimes the string will just be irritating that area but i was just like well i'm used to it and you know before i know what's happening i'll be home so i'll go and remove it but i was so uncomfortable i don't know it was just it was a very tight one so it was really digging in there like it was digging in there 
So I'm just like, God, why is it to wear this thing? And me, I don't like discomfort though. If you guys know, I don't like discomfort. Me, I'm the kind of person that when I go out, I go to the bathroom, I go and remove my waist trainer. Like, I'm that kind of person. Like, like I said, like, I, I, I don't have to die just because I want to lose weight or because I want to look, you know, sex, sexy or whatever. No, I used to go to the bathroom. If I wear a waist trainer, um, not waist trainer, what they call it, girdle. Yeah, if I wear girdle, if I wear tights, and I go out and I'm uncomfortable, you best believe I am looking for the bathroom or a corner to go and remove it, okay? So that day now, but because I was with him, I was just trying to maintain, let me not, you know, let me just maintain, so when I get back to my room, I'll go and remove it. So I just told him that, man, this thing is itching me, he was just like, <laughs> he was just like, who sent you the first plate? But I was like, huh, I need to just go and remove it. You know when it's like your boss crack, so I just need to remove this from my boss crack. I don't want to even remove the whole thing, but let me remove it a bit from my boss crack. So we were now walking back to my hostel. They are just at the junction. We're walking back to my hostel. I was still walking. So I, uh, in fact, the more I was walking, the more the thing was just the friction was becoming worse. I was like, no, I need to get this thing off my butt. Okay, sorry guys, my battery died, so I just changed my battery. Anyway, um, you guys might not even notice. I don't know what I'm telling you, but not, whatever. Anyway, so. I was we walking to my hostel and the road to my hostel was kind of far from the joint. It's not really far, but for someone who's that uncomfortable, it was like like Israelite journey. So we are walking, we are just him, we're still, you know, doing romance, you know, talking. In my mind I was like, my butt is on fire, I need to get this out of here. <laughs> so so walking to that, we all got to the part, I just told, I just told him, see, guy, like I need to go and get this other out, okay? And now I started walking faster. Walking faster. First of all, I was walking, you know, brisk walk, brisk walk. Then I started running. Then, yes, I started running to my hostel. So when I ran to my hostel, you guys, see how devil set somebody up. Instead of me to, my, my room was on the first floor. Instead of me to just complete the journey to my room, I was just like, I can't take it. You know how, you know how when you're pressed, you'll be holding it for hours. When you now see toilet, that's when you now start dancing. <laughs> That's what happened to me. I was I managed to you know when I got to my my hostel, I told me to just climb up. I said no, I can't take it anymore. I quickly there's this spiral, was this spiral, not spiral, but it was there was our hostel had external stairs, you know, this stairs that's outside. So I quickly just ran and it was already getting dark, a little bit dark. It was around past six to seven or past seven or something like that. It was a little bit dark. So I quickly just ran behind the stairs. It told me to just climb step up. I ran to the back of the stairs, put my hand and dragged it in out. I was just like, <sighs> you guys, so as I dragged it in out, I was just like, <sighs> I just turned and saw a guy. And one of the girls in my hostel, I think it's her boyfriend or whoever she was with her. She was with a guy, they were there making out. Me, I did not see them because I wanted to, to remove this drink. I did not see them. So I just did, ah, that was when my eyes now cleared. I just turned and saw them looking at me like, bing, bing, bing. I was just like, no, my God. I said, oh, good afternoon, good morning, good night. <laughs> Why am I even greeting them? Not like I greet just anybody a normal day, but I just look good morning, good night. I was just like, <laughs> I just thought, as I, as I thought to go back, I now saw my husband coming in, my fiance then, okay, I just thought and saw him already entering my hostel gates. I was just like, dude, okay, just, just, just don't look, just look forward, okay, just eyes straight, look forward until we get to my room, okay. He was like, what? So I said, no, 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 just look forward until we get to my room. <laughs> When we now got to my room and I thought they were happy, the guy just laughed at me. Eh? Oh, so that one is an inside joke between us. <laughs> if, if for some reason I start running, he'll say, eh, Well done, keep running. <laughs> Run and go and remove it. Oh, God. Anyway, yeah, so that's another embarrassing situation that I've been in. Uh, so this, the next one now is also with my husband. You guys, that's me eating some gisting, you guys. So I beg, I beg, I beg, I'm hungry. Mmm. 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 Let me make my tea, I beg. So I use um, Nescafe Gold Blend. I love this coffee. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if it's in my head, but I feel like it's the best. 
Um, I'm not the only person that don't like the calf. I don't like the calf coffee for some reason. I feel like I can taste this, that is the calf. Like I said, it might just be in my head, but what else? So anyway, in fact, I think part of why that one is not too bad for me is that I don't even remember the girl that was under the staircase. So since I cannot remember you, sis, it, it never happened. Like it never happened. If you remember me and you're watching this video, that's your business. It never happened because I don't remember you. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So the next embarrassing situation I've been in is. After me and my husband got married, there was a day we were supposed to... Was it after I got married? I think it was after our intro, but before our white wedding. My husband was posted to Lagos for a training, so he was like, Girl, I need you to come and stay with me. I mean, I was so excited because I'm pretty much a JJC when it comes to things like that. Because number one, I came from a... Well... We're not, we're not poor, but we're just an okay family. And we were, and we were quite sheltered. Okay, we were quite sheltered, we weren't really going anywhere. I didn't really know more. I was a JJC, okay? I was a JJC. Most of the things I know is just from online and watching TV and stuff like that. I wasn't someone that explored. Like, even till now, I grew up in Lagos, but even till now, there are places in Lagos that when people call them, like, where? I don't know where. I don't know how to even get to those places. Anyway, so ah, I now left school. I went to meet him at the hotel. You know, we stayed at two correct hotels that period. But I think this one was first a very. One of the most popular big hotels in Lagos, in Lagos is where we stay. I think it was Echo, either Echo or Sheraton. No, it was Echo Hotel or Sheraton. One of those two shares. So I, I was now feeling like, hey, let me come and experience this. So when I got there, I was so happy. Then showed me his room. Everything was so beautiful. I was so, ah, I was feeling so good with myself. So while we were there, I now told him that. See, Mama not a food person. Like he doesn't really like food. He eats for the sake of survival. He's not a person that craves anything, you know, <laughs> and it's a win-win for me because I, even though I like food, I don't like cooking, so since I'm my son, I don't really care about food, anything like cooking, just take care of my mom. I'm not a person that's always cooking fresh food every day or, he, oh, he has special demands. He is basically what my kids is, rice, beans, ever finish. <laughs> anyway, so, but as I was in the house, I was like, I'm that. Guy, as for your bread now, I'm hungry. I need to eat. He said, uh -uh, if you are hungry, that's the telephone line. Order food now. I was like, hey, I didn't want to tell this man that. I've never ordered food before. <laughs> Except in normal restaurants or fast food, you know, restaurants where you tell the waiter or tell whoever is behind the counter what you want to eat. I've never ordered food in a hotel room before. So I didn't know who to call, what to say. I was like, what would you, why would you come to get other food? I was trying to form me vex because I didn't just want, you know, to do it myself. I didn't want to embarrass myself. I told them to get other food now. Uh-uh. You -uh. not your guest, not your visitor. I'll call and other food now. He said he is not hungry and it's better for me to go through the menu and choose whatever I like and other food. I was just like, God, <laughs> this one. He told me to just talk. Home. And I don't want to push the matter too much. If I push it too much, it's not be obvious that, okay, what's the problem? Like, is it not just food? Like, you know, so. And I said, you know, let me just try. That was how your sister now went to Gar carry phone. I now called front desk. I called front desk. I didn't even call kitchen. I didn't even call uh, room service. I think I should have called room. Yeah, I should have called room service. But no, I, I felt like room service. I probably just come and clean the room. That's what I thought room service was. Okay, so I was like, no, no, I can't do room service. Let me call. I was not doing. Should I call kitchen? No, I'm like, why would I can call kitchen? They're not supposed to be answering phone. Okay, let me just call the front desk. So that was how I called front desk and said. <laughs> so when I called, the guy said, "Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon. How are you doing? This, 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 this. Uh, how may I help you?" And I said, "I need food." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this one too is like my husband will never allow me here. The last of this. This is an ongoing joke that forever and ever. I know he's going to be bringing it up. I've already. I've made peace with it that, I, <laughs> that that's going to be. I thought I just turned to me, I was like, ah, what is, what's happening here? I think I took both the anger of him not urging the food for me and me not knowing what to do and embarrassment. I just said, I need food. The guy said, okay. 
Okay, ma'am. Yeah, uh, I think you should go through our menu. I can't remember what he even told me, but I think he said I should go through the menu and then I should call room service and then order the food. But if I'm not able to do that, he will do it for me. But I can't really remember. But I mean, he told me that he will call room, he will tell room service to call me so I can tell them what I want. I'll be busy that I should call. I can't remember the whole gist. I should know that. My husband started laughing at me and I just blanked out. I was just like, you know what? At this point, I give up. I thought you see, you know, I ordered food before. What can you order food for me? He not said, hey, that's at least today's your first time. Now you've learned what not to say. <laughs> so anyway, that's how I finally ordered my food there. I was so embarrassed, like God, which one is I need food? I need uh, need food now. Who doesn't need food? Everybody needs food. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um that's how that whole thing ended. So right now, yeah, my husband, and then maybe he's hungry or something, he'll just tell me, I need food. <laughs> and yeah, I'll just get to do it because I already know what uh, he's talking about. Anyway, so that's it though. Those are my three most hilarious, embarrassing situations. I've been in sea, falling in public, check, and waving to the wrong person, check, answering the name that did not call you, check. Like, I've done, I've been in very, um, I've been in several embarrassing situations, but these are the ones that really stand out to me. And it's funny that I don't, anytime people ask me your most embarrassing situations, I don't even remember these ones. I don't know why. For some reason, I don't remember them. But when I'm on my own, uh, quiet time, just, you know, feeling cool with myself, next thing, they will come and remind me, laughing in front of a, a customer. Ha! Just, just. You guys, I forgot to show this part, but you know that tomato and onions base I'm always talking about that I make for my kids. Um, I just added some here because I had a lot remaining in the freezer. So I added some here and then I put the remaining fish, the remaining smooth fish into it. It's basically just fish, um, tomato, onions, pepper, salt. Um, that's pretty much it. Okay, I have like one maggi inside or something, one knock you. Uh, but it tastes so good. You guys eat potato, plantain, yam, rice, beans, fish, anything you want to eat. Um, yeah, it really tastes so good. Let me let me just put it off and go and rest because if I'm saying it tastes so good, it tastes so good now. Nah, I'm tempted to go and, go and carry, carry a, a, a plantain or something. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Mwah.